Greetings, I'm Timothy Snyder. It's the summer of 2021, and I am revisiting my book on tyranny, 20 lessons from the 20th century. I'm doing this in part because it's been almost five years since I wrote the book. I wrote it in late 2016, trying to prepare Americans for the Trump administration, trying to prepare Americans for the decline of democracy around the world that we faced in the last five years. But I'm also revisiting it because it's coming out again in a new version a graphic edition with updated text. I think the new edition is much more interesting and much deeper thanks to the fantastic work of the illustrator Nora Krug than the original book was. But I'm also just happy in general to have a chance to speak about the things about the, the, the things in the book which alas are still with us. So I think it's right to say that when On Tyranny appeared, um, much of the reaction was this is an exaggeration. Over the course of the four or five years since, most of the things that I talked about as possibilities in the book became realities. And of course, the larger point of the book is if you can anticipate these things, if you can recognize them as they're happening, as they're incipient, then sometimes you can put a stop to them. So I think this, you know, this unfortunately is the case. Um, it's unfortunately the case that our problems were not just Mr. Trump. Our problems have to do with our, our institutions, with our constitutional system, and fundamentally with ourselves. So if we're going to solve the problems, we have to begin with ourselves, and that's, that's where the book begins, with the things that we can do as individuals. Today I'm on Lesson 17, which is Listen for Dangerous Words. I'm going to read the lesson and then um, say a few words about what I meant by it. So, number 17. Listen for dangerous words. Be alert to the use of the words extremism and terrorism. Be alive to the fatal notions of emergency and exception. Be angry about the treacherous use of patriotic vocabulary. So when I'm writing these words in 2016, what I have in mind as a historian are historical examples. I'm thinking of moments where a state of exception or the idea of an exception was used to shift from one kind of political system to another. Um, the, perhaps the classical example is the transition from the Weimar Republic in Germany to the Nazi regime in 1933, which Hitler justified by way of an emergency, which, which generated a state of exception. A more recent example is Russia. In, at the very end of the 20th century, where, where Mr. Putin was able to manufacture what seemed like an emergency, a war, which justified the, the transition into a more authoritarian regime. But the truth of the matter is that we don't need those historical examples. If we look hard enough at ourselves, we can recognize something like this can happen to us because something like this did just happen to us. At the end of the year 2020 and the beginning of the year 2021, we as Americans passed through a fake emergency. The fake emergency was the idea that an election was stolen. Nothing of the sort happened, but a fake emergency is the cover under which a real coup d'etat can take place. And of course, a coup d'etat was attempted. Insofar as that coup d'etat was resisted and defeated, it's in part because people were able to listen for and recognize dangerous words. People understood that when the president spoke of enemies, he often meant good citizens. People recognized that when the president spoke of fraud, he meant, he meant votes that he didn't want counted. People recognized that when the president spoke of cities, he meant black people and his idea that black people's votes shouldn't count. When we listen for dangerous words, when we learn from history and from our own history what words actually mean, we can get out a little bit ahead and stop the worst things from, from happening. Another very dangerous idea which reappeared in late 2020 was the idea of a stab in the back. The stab in the back is the notion that the good guys would have won if not for the traitors at home. The stab in the back idea comes precisely from Germany in the early 20th century. It's the idea that Germany would have won the First World War had not the Jews and the socialists betrayed Germany at home. One of the things that I realized was dangerous or that I recognized as a dangerous word in late 2020 was this. This idea that Mr. Trump, uh, this idea that Mr. Trump articulated of being himself stabbed in the back, the idea that he, the most powerful man after all in the world, that he was a victim, 
that everyone was lined up against him, that he would have won had it not been for those traitors. That's a historical pattern which, which I noticed, but not only I noticed that. Fortunately, people who are, who are smarter and more important than me also noticed that pattern and recognized that the stab in the back is not just a lie. The stab in the back is also an excuse. The stab in the back is a reason to say, they struck first, therefore all I'm doing is striking back. The stab in the back is a way, of, is a way that the powerful have of making themselves seem like the victims. A stab in the back is a way of saying that anything goes. We resisted that. We, 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 we overcame it, at least for now. But those dangerous words of 2020, the big lie that Mr. Trump won the election, um, the, the, the big lie that the election was not carried out well, those dangerous words are still with us. We recognize them, many of us did, and that was very important. The next step, of course, is going to be Good enough is, is to become good enough patriots that we can find truths and that we can find reassuring words and that we can find better electoral institutions so that nothing like this ever happens again. Anyway, that was Lesson 17. Listen for dangerous words. Thank you.